is, is it is about enrolling and timetabling. So that's what we will be talking about uh, potentially for majority of the sessions. And I hope that you, if you do have any questions and today's session will be able to help you to resolve some of the queries or confusions you may have. To start with, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owner where we're meeting today, the Torba and Jaguar people. We pay our respects to their ancestors and their descendants who continue the cultural and spiritual connection to the country. We recognize their valuable contribution to Australia and global societies. So for some of you, maybe this is the first time that you have experienced or heard about the acknowledgement of country. So maybe some of you will be thinking or asking, what is this about, especially for our international students cohort? Some of you may have experienced this. So give you a little bit of background stories. So many of you may have known a little bit history of Australia. And, and this, this is shot um, in the past 200 years. Well, essentially, there was um, the, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. They were, they are the traditional owner of the land, and they are the first people. And of course, when Captain Cook and all the ships arrived uh, two, three hundred years ago, there has been a few bit of different movement. And one of the particular, I guess, period in in, in the history that none of the Australians were proud of is, of course, the uh, the white Australian policies as well as the stolen generation. And that's something that I guess nobody wants to repeat. And that's why around 10 years ago, former Prime Minister Kevin Rudd did a public apology. Um, and we also want to use this opportunity to encourage you to research more into what it means for the Aboriginal and Torres Islanders for their connection with the land. What is their kingship? What it means to be in their mob? And maybe I'll find out what is the rainbow serpent as well especially if you have dependents or kids who goes to school, it would definitely be very interesting to, to learn about the rainbow serpent. And as a matter of fact, as you progress into UQ, as you start your journey, you can actually deliver an acknowledgement of country at the beginning of your presentation as well. So there will be a few things we'll be talking about. The first to start with, we'll introduce you a bit about some of the deep important dates help you to understand different schools, faculties, study mode, as well as some of the keywords. And then we'll go into details about enrolling and timetabling. All right, so at UQ, we all love important dates. We all love different times. So as you can see here, so these are some of the upcoming crucial dates. You're probably thinking, hey, we're still in early June, maybe mid-June. Um, why does it matter for you now to think about time ahead, especially thinking about July, because time will fly, exactly, you know, it's, it will go by really, really quickly. Even think, think about it, next week, next week, the uh, timetabling um, would actually open. Okay, so you're probably thinking, what do you mean by timetabling open? All right, let me tell you a bit about back, a little bit of background story on this. So previously, we're talking about maybe before COVID, maybe 10, five, 10 years ago, maybe when I was at uni, you know, that's probably a little while ago, just a little bit shows my age. But when, when we were pre previously, before this new system in place, just since um, two years ago, getting a good timetable, it is like going to the Hunger Game, okay? Maybe you don't know about Hunger Game. Maybe it's a bit too old for some of you. Uh, maybe some of you have seen the, seen the movie, but essentially, uh, fighting for the sports in, in a class or in, in a, in a good timetable, it is like, you know, you're trying to be Katniss Everdeen. You're trying to get the best times you want to get, the best, you know, essentially the, the best arrangement. However, in a way, it is a bit unfair because what will determine whether you can get a good timetable is whether you have a really good hand to click and whether you have really good internet speed. So over the years, you know, we have heard a lot of feedbacks uh, from students and that's why since probably last year or actually the year before, UQ has developed a new system and trying to be fair uh, and bring advantage for all students. And so well, I'll tell you a bit more about how that system works, but essentially that system will kick in for you guys from next week 
then you can actually choose your, your time though. But the, don't worry about it. If it's still too confusing, we will be going through a lot more details very, very shortly as well. Okay, very quickly, we want to come down to the 14th of July. So mid-July, roughly about four weeks from now. We would like to remind you, especially for our domestic students cohort, that it is actually the last day to enroll. Okay, what, what does it mean to enroll? Uh, well, essentially, simply to put putting down that you need to choose at least one course as part of your program. Okay, so for example, if you're a first year bachelor undergrad students, Maybe you have to choose at least one business course, you know, one accounting course um, for, for postgrad students as well. You have to choose at least one uh, before the 14th of July. And for our international students cohort as well, it is roughly around 21st of July. Make sure, make sure that you have enrolled in at least one course so that we know you are enrolled and you will be with us this coming semester. Although I have no doubt that all of you are very, very keen and very, very excited to actually joining us at UQ for this coming semester. All right, well, I'm going to talk about orientation. So orientation starts on the 17th of July, and it's a week-long program. So, of course, most of you here are BAL students, you know, the business, economics, and law students. So you probably are aware of your faculty day. Exactly. We have a dedicated day just for you from your faculty. So Helen and Buddy, they are amazing setting up a lot of transition welcome sessions. And why orientation? It's, it's important, not only because it will give you a lot of really useful information. That's right. You will be able to meet with your fellow students, other first year UQers. Um, you'll be able to actually see some of your lectures, your tutors, mingle with them, meet with the support staff like Helen and Buddy. They want to be there to support you have a good start of this UQ journey. Not only that, but of course, you want to have a bit of fun as well. So orientation, it's a great way for you to connect with the community, join some of different clubs, societies. And, you know, this is, there are over 200 of them to choose from. That's right. Most of them are, you know, country based. Some that are discipline based. But there's also a lot of uh, interest based as well. You know, you can certainly join the, uh, the chocolate appreciation clubs. That's right. I always wonder what do they do when they get it together? Just you know, maybe eating different kinds of chocolates. That would be a heaven, isn't it? How good is that? Or maybe, uh, you know, the cheese and wine club. You know, that wouldn't be not, uh, that would be a nice club to join as well. Maybe the entry fees might be a bit more expensive just to cover the alcohols involved. Uh, but there will be so many different clubs uh, for you to choose at orientation weeks. And there will be also a lot of really free stuff. You know, we have a big barbecue, free calendars, lots of amazing stuff to choose. So my message is come to orientation week and better be here before. So give yourself a bit of time to settle down in Brisbane before you actually start your own week. That's right. And there's also the, the, the week always to finish with a big toga party. Um, it's amazing. It's a big, it's a fantastic. If you don't know what is it, just, just embrace yourself and have lots of fun. Okay, and of course, that, that week will go by really, really quickly. And the following Monday, that's where the real fun starts. That's right. That's where your classes will start. Um, what we would recommend as international students, I'll tell you a bit of uh, next page as well, but essentially, preferably, uh, that you would choose a full-time study load and over here at UQ, a full-time study load simply means you are taking roughly around eight units per semester, and that's translated into four courses. That's right, four subjects. That would be actually a recommended uh, a study load for, for a, any first-year students. Well, look, we have some, you're probably thinking four subjects, that's easy. I take five, I take eight subjects in high school or in your previous studies. Why do I only need four? Well, the thing is on paper, yes. So four subjects and think about it, each subject, you probably only have about three to four hours of teaching lessons. Mm, exactly, because you probably have a, a two hours of lectures, maybe another one or two hours of tutorials. That's it. 
That's it for this for the week. You only have like four hours per week on this particular course. So you think about it, four subjects, how many hours? 16 hours, 20 hours, easy. But the difference, the main difference is between university studies to maybe high school studies or some of the previous studies is it requires a lot of independent studies. And that's one of the struggles we notice in many, many our students have been difficulty transition to UQ or not doing so well academically in their first semester. One of the main reason is th there's a less, well, essentially when you're in high school, people will push you and you know, your teachers will push you, your parents will push you and keep you going, which is fantastic. However, while you're at UQ, while you're at uni, it is entirely up to you. That's right. So what we are recommending is on top of the four hours that you have for your for, for that particular course, you probably are looking at realistically and another eight to 10 hours of independent studies for that particular course. So that will probably come up together for 40 hours, 45 hours per week for a four course load. So that is a lot, exactly, right? Because you don't just want to spend all your time study. You want to do a bit of having a bit of fun, right? Go out, uh, go to have a bit of parties and maybe have a bit of entertainment as well. Who doesn't like that? So have a good balance. So if you choose more than that, so if you go with five, I would probably recommend not. It's probably a suicide. But you know what? Some of you may be brave enough to take on five to start with. I admire you, but remember this, the 4th of August, very, very important. Why it's important? Because it's actually the last day for you to change your course or change your enrollments. Okay, so we're talking about that potentially um, some of you are still deciding whether you want to go with three, four, five, or maybe you want to do a part-time. 4th of August is the last day to actually add any more courses. Yeah, why is that? Think about it, 4th of August, roughly, it is about the end of week two. How many weeks we have a semester? That's right, some of you probably done some research. We only have 13 weeks a semester. So think about it, if you missed two weeks of lectures, independent studies, it might be actually really, really difficult to catch up on your studies after week two. That's right, so we do not recommend to add any more courses after week two, because it gonna be create quite a bit of stress on your studies. However, the good news is you can actually still uh, drop any courses. As a matter of fact, you can actually drop any courses throughout the semester. Yeah, you didn't hear, you didn't hear me wrong. How crazy is that? Think about it, if you, in your high school, can you actually drop, say, mathematics just before final exams? Can you drop, say, biology just before final exams? You can't, that's crazy to think, but you can do that here at UQ, and you can give you that flexibility. But of course, there are catches. There are certain caveat you need to be aware, and that come down to the first census day, 31st of August. All right, so, if you drop the courses before, before the 31st of August, good news, there's absolutely no penalty whatsoever. So essentially what's going to happen is you will, be able to, um, you will be able to actually drop the courses without any academic penalties. It will not be written in your academic transcript with any grades. It will simply list it as a W, which is a withdrawal. And all the tuition fees you will be refunded to you, which is fantastic. However, say for example, if some of you have to drop it after 31st of August, there will be financial penalties and depends on the time that you drop, there will be some other academic penalties as well. So I would highly recommend if you're not sure, come and see us, talk to student services team, talk to your advisor, Helen Buddy at the Bell faculty and understand your rights and responsibilities before you take your actions. All right, so here's a list of different faculties and schools. I um, just wanna double check anyone actually from the faculty of creative industries here? No? Good, that's from QUT, just checking you're listening. 
But I, I trust most of you probably are here with the Bell faculty. That's the best faculty, the business economics and laws. So you guys definitely made a really good choice to study here with UQ and in the Bell faculty. Some key terminologies here, enrollments, that simply means you must, you know, when you're actually doing and enrolling, adding courses, timetabling, we're probably going to talk about that a little bit later, different programs, courses, units, it sounds very confusing, isn't it? But essentially program means the big overarching program you're doing, like Bachelor of Arts, that is your program. And then specifically within your program, you would have different courses. Look at some of the example here, Bio 2010 and 2021, these are specific courses, just like, you know, math, math B, um, or you know english biology whatever that may be those are your courses and each course would have a value and normally it's about two units and that's right so maybe it's a bit too confusing for you but don't worry too much about it because each step of the way we are here to support so if you need more information you can actually come and talk to us and I want to introduce you to a course coordinator. They are basically like your saviors when you're in trouble. Essentially, they know everything about the course and they want to be help. They want to be helpful to you as well. So approach, know who is your course coordinator, because when you're in trouble, they probably are there to help. And also ECP, that's an electronic course profile that it contains a lot of really, really useful information. One thing in the ECP I want to mention in particular is late penalty. Okay, so what is late penalty? Think about it. If you have assignment due today, it's due this afternoon at 5 p.m. So for example, you finish everything, you submit it by 5 p.m. today, the best you can get would probably be 100 points. That's right. That's the best you can get. However, if you missed today, missed the deadline this afternoon, and you submit it, even say by, by 5.30 or tomorrow morning, and say if there's a late penalty of 1%, what's the best you can get? That's right, 99%. We hear some mathematicians there, fantastic. So 98, 97, 99, all the way down. However, some courses, they have much higher late penalties. We're talking about 5%, 10%. So within a few days, you're not going to pass even if you submit it. So be very, very mindful of that and understand what are the extension policies as well. So again, where some other terms, including compulsory elective courses, majors, minors, those are all informations relevant to you and potentially are available through the ECP as well or program structure. If you're not sure, if you find it confusing, come and see us too. And then there will be different type of classes, including the big ones like lecture, where a lecture the professor will be able to give you a big presentation for an hour, for two hours, and you pretty much just listen, sit down there and listen. Well, tutorials or prac or contact hours are more small class based. You're probably expecting about 15 to 20 students in your tutorial, and it's a lot more interactive. And you can talk to the tutor, talk about your assignments, and recap and review what the lecturer did uh, at, the, at the big theater. This is what I mentioned earlier is uh, for international students, it is recommended for you to study full time. Well, actually, Technically, you are required to study full-time student studies, uh, which is eight units and roughly that's four courses. But of course, if you are encountering any issues, if you want to under-enroll, if you feel like you need to enroll more, then potentially, yes, you can talk to us and discuss about your options. So those are the different grades. Um, so maybe you have a different grading systems in your previous studies, but here at UQ and mostly uh, across most of the university here in Australia, uh, this is how the grading system works. So it is ranging from one to seven, one being pretty much a fail and seven being the best high distinction. So you're probably thinking why there's a one to seven, how do they grade it? Look, simply put it simply, it is actually can convert that into percentage. So for example, we're talking about four here, which is a pass, uh, which means you're not failing the course, then that is in most cases a grade of 50%. That's right. So when you add up, you calculate all your assessments divided by the total amounts. If it's above 40, then you are getting a pass. 
And so each grade would actually have an equivalent of percentage or percentile that you can find. Different courses would have slightly different arrangement. So check your ECP, your course profile for more details as well. So essentially, I understand that due to COVID previously, we have a bit of mixed, a hybrid live remote. Um, but uh, moving forward, of course, UQ is encouraging all students to come to campus, to have a lot of the in-person learning, which is always amazing. You'll be able to you know, see your peers, see your lectures, have face-to-face -face conversations. In occasional cases, there might be still some external study mode available, but make sure you check your course profile, check with the faculty and understand what are your responsibilities as well. Again, the, that's the ECP. I think we might actually have a screenshot. Yes, we should. So essentially we're talking about how to access your ECP, your course profile, which contains useful information. The easiest way is to search the course code, maybe through Google, maybe through um, I don't know, Mozilla, any 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 um, search engine that you use, Bing, Windows, yes. I'm not sure if people are still using it, but yeah, search for it and you'll be able to actually see that. I'll, I'll try to show you. This is exactly that. This is what an ECP look like. Okay, there may be a lot of words here. Don't worry, you get the whole semester to get familiar with it. So the standard ECP would give you different sections, including what is the course information, what are the learning objective, what are the assessments. So what we want to, to focus on, well, I would think all of the sections are very, very important. They're very, very useful because the course coordinators, they design this course and they put those information in the ECP for you because they know it will be useful and it will be very, very valuable for you as well. Again, I want to come down to the assessment on the right part, part of the page here. Essentially, it will tell you what are some of the exams or assessments report that you should expect as part of the course as well as what are the grading systems here. As you can see, we talked a little bit earlier about a um, pass. As you can see, this course has actually a rather higher pass rate. So if we're talking about earlier, in, in standard cases, 50% can make sure you pass. But here, it's actually, look at that, 56%. So you actually have to achieve 56% out of all your assessments in order to, uh, to pass. So it's actually a pretty challenging course, looks like. All right, well, I'm going to move on to the next part. We're going to talk a little bit about enrolling, and we're going to show you some of the platforms, particularly Signet, and how to add courses, how to job courses, and where to go if you need help. All right, I trust most of you probably have been to Signet, and you probably are very, very familiar with the system here. Okay, so what you can see here in this screenshot is the UQ, my UQ dashboard. So this is kind of the, the main platform where you'll be able to access different services. As you can see, you can check files, profile, requests, emails. And they will also give you a link to Blackboard, Signet, Orion, Unify. So Signet is where you will be dealing with mostly about your enrollments. There you go. So this student is owing $50 to UQ. So don't learn from him. Make sure you pay your fees uh, by due. Okay, okay. granted, maybe the students is, uh, would take the screenshot before the fees due. So, you know, that's okay. It's okay. Just be mindful. So these are some of the tiles that you will be expecting. Personal details, enrollments, financials. So what we're going to talk about is enrollments here. This is a crucial. This is important because that's where you will be able to go in and make changes to your classes. But I'll sign that there are so many other functions. You know, you can update your personal details. You can update your personal details. You can update your personal details. <laughs> Look, I'm not broken, but the reason we're saying that is the student don't update their personal details. Why it's important, why it's necessary, I'll give you a real life examples. So, so last year, 
Okay, some of you probably remember that was a major natural disaster happened here um, in Brisbane. So we're experiencing quite a uh, quite a downfall, uh, a, a few days of rain, rain, and it has actually caused um, pretty significant flood as as a result of it. Um, unfortunately, because UQ is is surrounded by the Brisbane River, um, and and actually a majority part of the university campus as well as nearby suburb, including St Lucia and Tuwong, are actually underwater. So where we're meeting now, where we're talking, you know, the, some of the buildings are also inundated, are flooded. It was a tragic, it was a really, really difficult time. Um, and the, the, actually, I remember that the only way in and out of UQ is actually through boat. That's right, you hear it right. So as a, as a result, we want to help our students who have their registered address as in UQ. All right, so we've gone to sign that. We search for all the students have their address listed in St. Lucia. And guess what? A lot of them are incorrect. Fortunately, we didn't lose any students. But as you can imagine, there was no power, no electricity, no internet, no access to food, maybe limited waters. Well, I mean, you can't drink flat waters, but, you know, drinking waters. So we have wasted quite a bit of time just to go through all the details. Um, so we want to avoid that happen, and then we want to encourage you to make sure update your personal details. So for example, if you have changed your mobile numbers, if you have moved to a new recommendations, maybe you got married here, <laughs> maybe, maybe in some cases, you never know, you never know. Um, please, please update Signet and keep us updated as well. So this is where you'll be able to add your courses. Maybe some of you have already done that and are familiar with. So simply go to enrollments, uh, click on add courses. Maybe it's a bit blur, I'm sorry, but um, yeah, I think, yeah, hope, hopefully you'll be able to see the um, the little button here, adding add courses, and you can search for the courses. If you know the course code, you can simply type it there. But if you're not sure, you can search by areas and then be able to enroll. It Look, it's it's very intuitive process, very straightforward. Um, and the thing is, even if you make a mistake, you add the courses you're not supposed to add, you can still drop it. Don't worry, as long as you do that before the census day, it, it will be okay. So I'd like, if, if you can take a screenshot of all the, uh, all the especially I guess for the, for the Bell faculty, Contact them if you need any course advice. They can actually link you in with a faculty advisor who will be able to go through you know, your individual study plans, help you understand what are the program rules, course structures, and get you to graduate at your desired time frame as well. Okay, next we're gonna talk a little bit about Hunger Games. No, no, not Hunger Games, <laughs> timetabling. That's right, we're gonna talk, tell you a bit more about how UQ has improved the system to bring equality and hope every, every student will be able to benefit. Okay, so as I mentioned, the student preferences system will start next Monday. Let me just double check. Yes. It will actually start, that's right. It will basically start next Monday at noon time. What that means is essentially, some of you may have received the emails already, maybe you haven't, but essentially you will be able to go to the UQ timetabling system, the Allocate Plus. So in the system, you will be able to see all the courses that you have enrolled. That's why so it's so important to enroll them early so that you are able to choose your timetable. So you can choose, you can see all the courses that you have already chosen. And then you, once you click on the courses, you'll be able to actually see what are the available courses. That's right. I actually got a video to show you. It's really comprehensive, easy to understand. So if you feel like I'm just talking nonsense, don't worry. I got a video uh, getting ready for you as well. And then this, the timetabling preferencing process will open for a few weeks and eventually it will close. Why? Because the system need time to actually process everyone's request. And you know, why there are everyone's request preference? Don't worry, we got a video to show you. It will be pretty straightforward. 
And then we will be able to give you an experience, opportunity to change. That's right. So if you're not happy with your timetable, you can actually change or put it on the waiting list. And eventually we will try to get everything finalized by early August. All right. I think my video is coming up. No, not yet. Okay. I'll still show you some screenshot here, as you can tell. You'll be able to actually um, uh, look at your timetable. So this is actually just a screenshot of what it looks like. So I, I, let me just, I'll just show you the video. Then. Give me a second. All right, there we go. I'll turn on the sound for you guys. All right. Finger crossed this will work. This video will help you preference your classes using My Timetable. Through the My UQ portal, you can access the My Timetable application on the left hand side toolbar. On the left of screen, you can view the courses in which you are enrolled. Any class marked with a red symbol requires your attention. When you are notified with a yellow symbol, your preferences for this class are pending. When you are notified with a green symbol, this class has been allocated and requires no further attention. Select a class to enter your preferences. View all available class times displayed in either list or timetable format by switching between the views on the top right hand corner. Next to the preference drop down menu, a percentage will indicate the popularity of the class. To preference a class, you can use a drop down menu to nominate your preference. Where there are four or more options, you will be required to select a minimum of four preferences. Where there are a large number of options, you can choose a maximum of 10 preferences, then select Save. Here, you will be successfully notified of your progress. Now that we have input our preferences into each class, yellow symbols indicate our preferences are saved and pending allocation. When the class preferencing window has closed, my timetable will be unavailable for a few days. During this time, the system will create your personalised timetable based on your preferences. Right? I told you the video is pretty good. I, I reckon I reckon we can watch it again. It's pretty quick. Let's watch it again. Um, and if you have any questions, then we can try to discuss it. This video will help you preference your classes using My Timetable. Through the My UQ portal, you can access the My Timetable application on the left hand side toolbar. On the left of screen, you can view the courses in which you are enrolled. Any class marked with a red symbol requires your attention. When you are notified with a yellow symbol, your preferences for this class are pending. When you are notified with a green symbol, this class has been allocated and requires no further attention. Select a class to enter your preferences. View all available class times displayed in either list or timetable format by switching between the views on the top right hand corner. Next to the preference drop down menu, a percentage will indicate the popularity of the class. To preference a class, you can use a drop down menu to nominate your preference. Where there are four or more options, you will be required to select a minimum of four preferences. Where there are a large number of options, you can choose a maximum of 10 preferences, then select Save. Here, you will be successfully notified of your progress. Now that we have input our preferences into each class, Yellow symbols indicate our preferences are saved and pending allocation. When the class preferencing window has closed, my timetable will be unavailable for a few days. 
During this time, the system will create your personalised timetable based on your preferences. There you go. I really think this video is pretty straightforward. It's it's really, really good and easy to understand. So we're talking about how to choose your preferences. You know, well, look, some courses, especially some smaller classes, you probably don't need to choose a preference because there's only one class available. So it doesn't really matter, you know, how many choices. Well, there's only one choices. So you're going to that class anyway. So essentially, you don't need to preference or choose um, or just simply to confirm but if the classes is much bigger has a lot more uh, options to choose from then yes you know we'll go with the preferences there uh, so once you have putting all your preferences finalize it then forget about it so leave it and then the system the big magic worldwide of web would actually create um, amazing, maybe chat GBT, right? Who knows? They will actually create a, 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 the best timetable for you. They will try to take a uh, factor in your preferences as well as all the peoples in your class, in, in your class. So they will be able to try to give you the, the time that you really want. Because say not everyone want to go into the classes at 8, 8 a.m. on a Monday morning, right? You know? Um, just saying, or people, nobody want to finish at about 7 p.m. on a Friday afternoon. You're probably on the way to the pub already. But you know what? They were trying to prioritize your preferences. And then they were going, once it's finalized, you will have your individual preferenced timetable. That's right. Very unique to you. However, if you look at that, you feel like, mm, you know, you still feel like changing it, still feel like this is not really the best you want then you can actually swap classes and trying to maybe add your name to a wait list if the classes you want is already full. So we're going to look at another video here and check out how you can do that. You now have your personalized timetable that can be accessed through the MyUQ portal via the timetable application on the left-hand side toolbar. If your situation changes and your timetable no longer suits, you can make changes during the class adjustment stage. On the left of the screen, you can view the courses in which you are enrolled. If there is a green symbol, your classes have been allocated. After the allocation process is complete and where places are available, you are able to change your allocation by clicking the select button next to your preferred class. If a class is full, you can request a swap by clicking the heart icon. You will then become waitlisted and allocated if a place becomes available. If you change your mind, you can deselect the swap request by clicking the heart icon. If you see a clash, you will not be able to allocate to this class. That's right. So look, I think those two videos are really, really comprehensive and it will be highly recommended. If you want, go back to the UQ website and, and review those videos for some good tips. But look, like I said, it is very straightforward. And this are the different timetable team that will be able to support you if you need. So look, look out for the, the Bell faculty and get in touch if you need any specific support as well. Or come and see us or approach any of the faculty advisors if you feel like, hey, you need to discuss more about your options. All right, so next we're gonna get you to do a quick shot survey. See if I can get your phone out. And uh, yes, yeah, scan the QR code. My manager promised me that it's a very short QR code, a very short, sorry, survey. So I'm actually just doing it myself too. So for the session, you can choose the student guide to enrolling and timetabling. Oh, it is pretty short. There's only a few questions.
you, you're welcome to leave any feedback if you like. You can say that, you know, James is doing a good job. <laughs> no pressure, no pressure. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. So I'll give uh, another minute or so. Oh, thank you. Thanks, thanks very much. And appreciate all the feedbacks. We're coming to the last part of the sessions and we're gonna wrapping up very quickly. I'm just gonna mention two important reminders. The first is highly, highly recommended. It's actually important to complete the academic integrity modules. Maybe some of you have already done that. Very, very straightforward. It's probably going to take you an hour or so, um, or maybe less than that, actually, for some of you. The academic integrity, it's quite important because it helps you to understand what is the ethical principles, uh, especially to do with your studies and with your life as well. It is compulsory and it is important for you to complete. You can do that through the uh, through the UQ Blackboard um, or, or different platforms, but you will be actually given the link to complete that as well. And not, lastly, I want to mention about the EAC program, English for Academic Communication. This program is provided and run by our UQ College pro, um, um, services. Why they're so good is simply because UQ College is dedicated and specialized in training English or teaching individuals to improve their English. So maybe English is not your first language. Maybe you have been away from university settings for a little while. This program is definitely dedicated for you. You can simply enroll and choose your discipline. That's right. You can actually choose either business, accounting, laws, economy, whatever that suits you in that particular discipline. You will be meeting with other students and doing similar programs and also participating in this EAC program. It's only about two weeks intense programs doing online, so it's not going to take too much of your time, but very, very beneficial. Look at some, some of the, uh, the, 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 uh, the pros of doing this. Help you to communicate earlier uh, clearly and help you with uh, understand the academic context how to participate in academic life and be able to achieve your learning goals. So really, really good tips and strategies. So that's pretty much it. Wrap up our sessions. I think we did well to be able to finish before the hour mark. We will leave the next 15 to 20 minutes with some questions, some Q and A's. So both me and my colleagues here will be available to answer any queries you, you can have, either through the Q&A functions here, or we can simply uh, help you to turn on your mic and you are able to ask questions verbally if you like as well. Uh, if you don't have any questions, again, we thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for choosing University of Queensland and study here with our Bell faculty, which is amazing, amazing facilities. And if you are not here in Brisbane yet, we, we're welcome. We, we would love to see you here on campus very, very soon. We, would, uh, we can't certainly wait, wait to, uh, to see you in person and be able to welcome you as part of the orientation process. All right, so if you don't have any questions, all the best. Good luck with your uh, with your journey ahead and you're more than welcome to jump off. But if you are having any questions, put that into a Q&A and we can go through it together. So thank you guys. Thanks very much. Wow, Helen and, and, and Buddy, you guys are amazing. Uh, get, get onto it so quickly and straightforward. That's amazing. Thank you. Thanks.
Well, if you don't have any questions, I also highly recommend to uh, to join some of our upcoming sessions. I might just stop share screen for now. Uh, yeah, welcome to join some of the upcoming presentations we have prepared for you here at UQ as well for the next few weeks. So definitely um, join that if you can. Very, very useful. Yep, someone is asking about the recordings. Absolutely, you can certainly request a copy. Simply contact Student Services. So that's student.services at uq.edu.au and request a copy. No problem at all. Oh, any other questions? No problem. Yeah, someone. Oh. You're onto it, buddy. That's amazing. Thank you, guys. <laughs> no, feel free to respond to that one. That's okay. No, no, it's, it's fine. No, I, I'm pretty sure we're probably going to just with the same answer but yeah it is actually quite someone's asking when they see their timetable they notice there is actually no lectures um simply they only have uh, seminars it's, it's actually quite normal so some classes depends on their course structures they are not there's no um uh, actually uh, lectures scheduled which is actually perfectly normal yeah thanks james <laughs> So students, think about it, you know, your, your advisor, Helen, buddy here, they're just a representative of how amazing the team is. They're really dedicated, very enthusiastic trying to help you out. So you guys are in really good hands. Yeah, sure. Someone is asking about potentially see that the, the timetable preferencing is, is actually opening from the next Monday, but maybe your enrollment hasn't been progressed yet. Do not worry. So during the whole period where you can actually choose your timetable preference, there is absolutely no disadvantage to do it on next Monday or Tuesday or the last day before the program, the, the allocation process closed. Absolutely no difference. You will not be disadvantaged at all. So yeah, don't worry too much if you can't choose it on Monday. You got plenty of time to choose it. So the system will then collect everyone's data, uh, analyze, and be trying to give you the best timetables that you prefer.
Cool. All right. Well, we, uh, we're probably going to wait for two more minutes. Um, but if there's no more question after that, we'll probably wrap up the session by then. So thanks for your questions, um, Buva. You were asking um, whether you can choose external in person. I do believe uh, generally if you are here, if you're planning to come to UQ campus, which we highly recommend, is definitely come and study in person online as in person mode or internal mode. Uh, however, if you are unable to um, choose internal mode, depends on the courses that you choose. If the course is still offering external study mode, then yes, you can. However, my understanding is uh, most of the courses are phasing out the external study mode. And so that's why we want to encourage you to come to campus. Besides, it's a beautiful country. It's a beautiful city. And, you know, it's, look at look outside. It's a, it's beautiful sunshine at the moment. We got a little bit of breeze, but hey, it's it's absolutely amazing, amazing weather. Ooh, all right. Well, thanks very much. Uh, I think we, we are about to wrap up. Thank you again for, for your participation and for your, uh, you know, joining us today. On behalf of my colleagues, Helen and, and Buddy, uh, we appreciate your presence today. We thank you very much for joining us and we wish you all the best. And we can't wait to see you on campus very soon. So take care, guys, and uh, hope to see you in Brisbane.